All right, we're in section 5.3, conditional probability and independence. So we're going to define one more type of probability. It's called conditional. It's the probability that event B occurs given that A has already occurred. Um, it's called a condition. A is my condition. And the way we write it is we write probability B, we do a big line to say given A. So given A has happened. So let's look at some examples. Um, so we've already looked at rolling a die, right? Um, if we want to know the probability of rolling a five, right, that's just one out of six. There's no given here. These are probabilities we've already done. So it's one, six, six, seven. All right, one divided by six. So let's see how these givens change things. So the next one says, what's the probability of a five given that it's odd? So essentially what we're saying is we already know that we have an odd number. So we're not looking at one through six anymore. We're only looking at odd numbers, which means it's one, three, or five. So there's only three numbers to pick from now. So the given is now saying we don't have the whole entire dice. We only have three sides. So the new total is three. And then how many of those are five? Just one. So one out of three or 0.3333. So the given essentially changes the total. Let's try another one. What if it's given that it's even? So this is saying it's even, meaning again, it's not one through six, it's only two, four, or six, because those are my even numbers. So my total is three. And then how many of those numbers are five? None, right? It's actually impossible. It's impossible to be five given that it's even. So by knowing that it's even, five is no longer possible. So the probability is zero. So um, anytime we do a conditional, the given is now my new sample space, which essentially means the given is the new total. So let's try a couple more. Um, and order does matter. So we're gonna look at C given D versus D given C. So we have the probability um, of C given D, where C is that we get an even number, so even given that we have four or less. So I almost think of this as like a sideways fraction. So my denominator is four or less. So four or less means I have one, two, three, or four. Five and six are no longer options because of the given. So my denominator is four. My new total is four. There's only four options. And then how many of those are even? Two or four. So two out of four or 50% or 0.5. So essentially we're finding the new total and then we're just finding what's left in this new sample space. All right, let's do the reverse, which is not necessarily the same thing. So four or less given even. The second one is always my given. So now given even means two, four, or six. So my total is three, because there's three numbers in the given. And then how many of those are four or less? Two and four, right? Six is not four or less, so two out of three. So we do get a different result. So order does matter. And this will give us six, 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 seven. So again, find the new total before you start just immediately writing numbers down.